The South Union Township Sports Network in cooperation with the South Union Township Supervisors live streaming today for Mustang Field, home of the Laurel Highlands High School Boys Soccer Team as they wrap up their regular season taking on the Trinity Hillers. Hi everybody, I'm Brian Morozak with Nick Barczyk. and welcome you aboard for tonight's High School Boys Soccer Game, South Union Township Sports Network coverage. Brock choose a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, Breezeline Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith. Again, I'm Brian Morozak with Nick Barczyk. And Nick, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs wrapping up their season today. Unfortunately, the Mustangs missing out in the postseason for the first time since 2015, but certainly trying to end the season on a high note. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. It's tough when you know you have nothing really to play for in terms of the standings, but for these players, especially the seniors, it's their last games on a high school field with their friends and their teammates, their last few games winding down the stretch of the season, so you want to play for pride and play for maybe if you're heading to college and playing soccer you want to show your coaches how you can uh, perform even in games that aren't really impactful in the standing so yeah still a lot to play for even if you're mathematically out of the postseason now ready for the starting lineups let's turn it over to our public address announcer jason taylor good evening, good evening. Welcome, welcome. 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 welcome to mustang field here on the campus of Lower highlands senior high school, high school. for this evening's Boys soccer matchup between the visiting Trinity Hillers and your Laurel Highland Mustangs. The starting lineups starting with the visiting team, Trinity. On defense, a sophomore, number two, Luke Thornburg. On defense, a junior, number five, Jacob John. A forward, senior, number eight, Owen Baker. On defense, a senior, number nine, Zachary Thornburg. A midfielder, junior, Number 10, Mateo Basako. A junior midfielder, number 13, Tyler Johnson. A freshman midfielder, number 21, John Garcia. On defense, a sophomore. Number 25, Braden Knight. In goal, a sophomore. Number 26, Ryan Tavoli. A senior midfielder, number 27, Connor Smith. And a sophomore, forward, number 29, Andy Palm. The Hillers are led by head coach Alex Nikolopoulos. Assistant coaches Albert Gestier, Bill Higgins, and Eric Houghton. And now, the starting lap for your Low Highland Mustang! Most things are led by head coach Jerry Rogers, assistant coaches Jerry Rogers Jr., Josh Naren, and Vernon Chandler. A junior defenseman, double zero, Cooper Hunt. A junior midfielder, number seven, Bryce. Tendershaw! A freshman forward, number eight, Cole Radcliffe! A junior forward, number nine, Thatcher Wilson! In goal for the Mustangs, a junior, number ten, Luke! Simpson. Simpson! A junior midfielder, number 14, Tim Lasik. A 
at forward, a junior, number 18, Courtney Weston. On defense, a senior, number 19, Caleb Janowski. On defense, a junior, number 20, Kayton Ruokaba. A senior midfielder, number 25, Harry Radcliffe. And a senior defenseman, number 30, Ian Hamilton. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we would ask that everybody please rise. Gentlemen, remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Jason, you still got to go up there for Trinity. Don't want to spot him once. And we're ready to play some soccer tonight from Mustang Field here at Laurel Highlands High School. Brian Morozak along with Nick Barczyk, Jason Taylor on the public address system tonight. The Mustangs wrapping up the regular season here against Trinity this evening. These same two schools will meet for a high school football game tomorrow at Hillersfield in Trinity. We mentioned the final game of the regular season. The Mustangs coached by Jerry Rogers in his ninth year. Enter the match today, 8-9 and nine overall, 5-8. and eight in conference play. Alex Nicolopoulos, the head coach of the Trinity Hillers. The Hillers 10 and 5 overall, 8 and 5 in conference play. Trinity playing their final regular season conference game. They'll play a non-section game with Washington on Wednesday before opening up WPIL playoff action next week. Looking at the conference standings, Thomas Jefferson at the top of the table, 12 and 1 of the conference. 14-2 overall. Bethel Park in second place. 12-3 in conference play. Actually, 12-3 overall. 11-2 in conference play. Trinity in the third position in the conference. 10-5 overall. They're 8-5 in the conference. And Connellsville and Ringgold tied for the fourth and final playoff spot in the conference, entering the final night of conference play. Both of those schools 7-6 overall. Laurel Highlands out of playoff contention at 5-8. Albert Gallatin sitting at 1-11-1 overall in Uniontown 0-12-1. Trinity in their away whites, blue numbers, blue shorts. They're working right to left as we describe it. The Mustangs in their home reds, white numbers, blue shorts, working left to right. As Thatcher Wilson steps into the center circle. Wilson, the Mustangs leading scorer entering play today. And we'll get this match underway. Just tilt it down a little bit. The Mustangs control back to Harry Radcliffe in the midfield. Send it back on the defensive line to Cooper Hunt. Quickly picked up by Mateo Laseco for Trinity. But the Mustangs on the counterattack. Cole Radcliffe is looking for a little feed there. Never got his way from Thatcher Wilson as Trinity looks to break back here down on the near wing with Owen Baker. Mustangs a little double team here on the near boundary. Hiller's player went down. That was Andy Palm. And Trinity awarded a free kick here early on, Nick. Absolutely. 
just underway in this one. And we'll see last night we had an entertaining match, a 3-2 win for uh, Laura Highlands' opponent. Uh, that was Ringgold. Ringgold last, last yes. night. How yeah. quickly we forget. Yeah, quickly I forget, <laughs> Brian. I'm so sorry. Yeah, Ringgold. But we'll see how this one plays out. Trinity working here at the top of the 18. Mustangs looking for a little poke out there from Ian Hamilton. Trinity coming back here with John Garcia. Send it off on the far side. A little cross out in front. Rolls back to the Mustang keeper, Luke Simpson. Laurel Highlands playing a 4-3-3 here today with Cole Radcliffe, Thatcher Wilson, and Courtney Weston on the front line. Bryce Bendishaw, Tim Lacey, Harry Radcliffe in the midfield. With Cooper Hunt, Caleb Yanoski, Kate Rova Cobb, and Ian Hamilton on the back line. Luke Simpson in goal. Mustangs, three seniors, seven juniors, and one freshman. And they're starting 11 today. Trinity playing a 4-4-2. They have Owen Baker and Andy Palm on the front line with Mateo Laseko, Tyler Johnson, John Garcia, and Connor Smith in the midfield. Luke Thornburg, John, Jacob John, Zach Thornburg, and Braden Knight on the back line. With Ryan Torboli in goal, the Hillers three seniors, three juniors, and four sophomores in their starting 11. As John Garcia works it off on the far boundary, Hillers trying to set it up. Second meeting of the season between these two schools. Trinity won a one to nothing game to set it on a penalty kick over Laurel Highlands back in September. Typically, there have been some pretty competitive games in the history between these two schools. Last year, the schools split the season series. Laurel Highlands won. One to nothing in Trinity, while Trinity won two to nothing here at Laurel Highlands. Hiller's looking for another poke into the box. Ian Hamilton trying to clear it out there, and Harry Radcliffe sends it back down into the midfield there to Thatcher Wilson, and Wilson a pretty good run here for the Mustangs. Here's Thatcher Wilson on the break, and Wilson looking for a little poke. Ball still loose and finally covered there by Ryan Torboli. Nick, it seems no matter what the sport, the matchups between Laurel Highlands and Trinity only seem to be close. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like always in football and basketball and here in soccer. We'll see if that trend continues this evening. All headed back and forth a couple of different directions before Yanoski picks it up over to Tim Lasik. And now on the defensive line on the far side, Cooper Hunt playing it back to the keeper, Luke Simpson. Simpson a little lob out here on the near side. Bodied down by Trinity's John Garcia. They'll play it back to Connor Smith. Their defensive line sniffed a little lob down the far wing. Hillers look to send it up here in the Laurel Highland zone. A little pullback and a blast just going high there from Connor Smith, senior midfielder for the Hillers. Out of play for a Mustang goal kick. 36-21 left here in the first half, just underway. Trinity and Laurel Highland scoreless. Hillers a season ago in 10-6-2. Lost in the first round of the WPIL playoffs to Franklin Regional. Laurel Highlands coming off a 15-4 campaign last year. Lost a number of talented seniors to graduation. Just couldn't sustain that momentum. Had some injuries. Had some other issues that popped up. A couple of untimely red cards. And kind of put the Mustangs behind the eight ball midway through the season. Sometimes... Getting a little bit of a rut, Nick. Sometimes it's just tough to get out of it. Oh, absolutely. That's the case in any sport, and it's always tough to turn those around. But eventually you get your legs under you, and you can get it back out there and perform better. Hunt defending. Hiller's looking for a little cross from the far side. He's into the side of the goal. We had a goal kick here for Laurel Highlands. As Luke Simpson will put it down again. Our sponsors here on the South Union Township Sports Network, the Sprouse Insurance Group, and Agent David Hughes as the Hillers intercept a Mustang clear. Goes back to Owen Baker. Baker trying to dance around Harry Radcliffe. Baker here top of the 18. And Ian Hamilton breaking up that run. Back down to Harry Radcliffe. A little body bump and a foul will get called there on Trinity's Jacob John. Went into the back there of Courtney Weston. And the Mustangs will get a free kick. Pretty obvious there, Nick. Absolutely. A lot of contact there. The officials have to call that one. So was contact in last night's match yeah. that wasn't called. but The referees let a lot go last night. Caton Rulvacaba on a little line drive to the top of the box. Never got down to Thatcher Wilson. Bodied back by Harry Radcliffe with a blast into the back of the net. And that was sweet, Nick. Harry Radcliffe from about 25 yards out. His final game as a Mustang soccer player gives Laurel Highlands a one to nothing lead. 
Yeah, what a way to cap off his last game. Hopefully he has some more goals, but what a shot there by Radcliffe. And again, the Mustangs able to strike first, and that's a big advantage, obviously, to get that first goal early in this match, and hopefully they can get some insurance goals. We mentioned last night during the girls' broadcast that Harry received his first football scholarship offer to Grove City College this past week. It's a big week for Harry, and I think he's open to soccer offers as well. I think they're going to you know, weigh and see what's best for him and what might be his best ability or best opportunity to play in college and decide whether he wants to go the football route or the soccer route next year. Certainly nice to keep all of your options open. Certainly, and it's great that he's that good in both sports and he's going to have to put out some insurance on his foot there. I mean, that's man, he's, he's something in both sports. Mustangs trying to play spoiler here today. We mentioned Trinity, the third-place team in the conference. Mustangs pretty much just playing for pride, but they can maybe knock the Hillers down a couple of notches as far as playoff seating with a win here today. Yeah, playing the role of spoiler, you obviously want to be in the driver's seat looking for a playoff berth, but when that option's eliminated, you can always ruin the other team's night and season. Garcia had it stolen from Radcliffe, and Harry seems pretty motivated out there today. Touch over to Thatcher Wilson. Thatcher slipped down on the little clearance up the field. One out of play. And Braden Knight descended in, and Harry will be busy again tomorrow night as well as the Laurel Highlands football team travels to Trinity to take on the Hillers. There you go. How's the press box like at Trinity, Brian? It's not bad. All right. Richie Rich there. Well, you're on the air, so what can you say? You know? No, it, it's, it's not a bad. I have no, I have no qualms about it. I mean, it's not like go. a press box I complain about. No, no. I mean, it's there not are Pine, some you do. Yeah. It's not Pine Richland, but <laughs> no, I mean, well, it's, it, what is? Yeah. But it's a, it's an adequate facility, and they're actually making some stadium renovations as well down at Trinity. There are no steps like at Ringle that Steve Supercast has to contend with. No, right? no, okay. just your normal, you know, kind of like here. The press box kind of sits up at the. Top of the bleachers. You walk up the bleachers to get there, but no, well, there you go. no oddities. Richie Rich does a great job there as the athletic director of Trinity. He always takes care of us every time we go down there, and their staff always very hospitable to us. Another opportunity for Radcliffe. Back into the box, trying to get a little help there from Courtney Weston, trying to spin off a defender. Resets back on the far side, and there's an opportunity for Bryce Bendishaw, and the Hillers able to clear it back to Ian Hamilton on the Mustang defensive line. Actually did a Laurel Highlands girls playoff soccer game there a couple of years ago down at Trinity. Oh, okay. And there's Radcliffe spinning back into the box. Also the last opportunity, Nick, for Harry to play with his brother Cole. Yeah, that's awesome to see the brothers out there together, and that's a great thing about high school sports and get to play with your siblings, whether it be your brother or your sister. And pretty neat for the Radcliffs this year to have three kids all in high school, Cole a freshman, Jocelyn a junior, and Harry a senior. Yeah, that's great. This one going back to Luke Simpson. Yeah, it's a lot of games to drive to and a lot of schedules to keep yes. up with. And kudos to mom and dad. Yeah, and we saw actually Courtney down there taking pictures. Harry's mother and Harry's dad also named Harry. Always up here watching <laughs> the games, usually right below us. That's great. And there's Harry battling Ooh. down on the field and drew a foul there for the Mustangs. Foul going on Connor Smith. And we'll have Jerry Dupay back with us tomorrow. The Godfather. Yes. For the Laurel Highlands Mustangs and Trinity Hillers. So if you're wondering why the camera work was so bad the last two nights <laughs> and why it's back to normal Friday because Mr. Jerry Dupay's back in action. Rova Cobb, a little line drive save there from Torbali. Again, our broadcast would not be possible if it wasn't for the Sprouse Insurance Group in Union Town and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Union Town, Dr. Calvary's Ruth Hart Stokes and Hoppy, Zebley Mahalov and White, Union Town Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Road, Union Town, in front of the Fayette Plaza, and the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Boosters. Andy Palm here for Trinity, battling Kate and Rulva Cobb, another brother sister combination. Kate's sister, Jaden, plays on the Laurel Highlands girls team. A little free kick here for the Hillers. Kind of like a corner kick here, but actually in the field of play. From just about the same location. And a lob here into the box. Sent down out in front. And a good chance there for Tyler Johnson. Just wasn't able to generate a shot. 
The Mustangs try to break back there with Bryce Bendishon deflected on a play. Be Hiller's ball. Gets sent in here to John Garcia. Garcia, good young player. Only a freshman out there for Trinity. Mustangs add a little pressure there from Cooper Hunt. Couldn't knock down the ball. Hiller's play on as Connor Smith tries to dance around a couple of defenders. Smith still with it. Had Andy Palm off to his left, and they're able to keep possession again here near the top of the 18. Cole Radcliffe a little knocked down over to Brother Harry. Up the field to Thatcher Wilson. Thatcher kind of fell over the ball there, trying to regain two Hillers around. First two, it was John Garcia able to free it up now to Braden Knight, who comes forward here. Back to his right again to Garcia. 11 minutes in, Garcia blast from 34 yards out, and this is wide on the far side. Well, a Mustang goal kick. You can see our first substitution of the night here on the Laurel Highlands side. Get some fresh legs yes. out there. As Harry Radcliffe, after that opening goal, will check out. And you'll have Tanner Bruzda checking in. Sophomore. And that's a great memory for Harry in his last game to get at least one goal, hopefully more. Obviously playing two sports, he's been pretty yeah. worn down as well. Is he? Was actually sick last week for the Mustang games, could only go limited minutes. And don't be surprised if you see, hate to say on a pitch count, but kind of maybe on a <laughs> minute clock. What is or, baseball playoff yes. time? Yes, yeah. <laughs> You're in the spirit. You're a big baseball I'm trying fan. I'm trying to stay in the spirit. But I, think, I think they're going to limit his minutes. Let's put it that there way. There you go. That's say, even better. And Simpson will clear it out here again for the Mustangs over the head there of Wilson. Tim Lasick stepping in, but controlled there by Mateo Lasenko of Trinity. A little lob down at the top of the box. Ian Hamilton, the intercept there for the Mustangs, was trying to send it out to Bryce Bendashaw. Goes out of play on the far side. Hillers get possession back. A little lobbing in the direction of Mateo Laseco into the box. A little contact, nothing called. As the ball goes down to Luke Simpson again. He had Owen Baker there on the Hiller side trying to draw a little contact. The Simpson blasts back towards center in the direction of Thatcher Wilson. Headed there by Zachary Thornburg, one of the Hiller's captains here today with the armband on. Andy Palm down the field. Good run here again, Owen Baker. And Baker trying to get around Ruva Kaba. Pulls it back. A little help there from Tyler Johnson with a blast. Miss high, misses high and wide on the far side. Yeah, another Mustang goal kick. Just over 13 minutes in for Mustang Field here at Laurel Highlands High School. Nice to have you along with us. Brian Rozak along with Nick Barczak. Final game of the season for the Laurel Highlands boys soccer team. Mentioned that playoff run. All good things must come to an end. How many years was that run, Brian? They have not missed since 2015, six oh, straight wow. years. That's pretty impressive. Yes. Bordering on a dynasty there, yes, but yeah, you're right. Boys it's a rebuilding year. Six straight years entering this year. Hiller's program also on the upswing. We'll talk about that in a little bit as Courtney Weston pulls it back to Tim Lasick. And backside Cooper Hunt has it stolen. Play whistle down. And they're going to call a foul there on Hunt and Nick. That's a situation where I wish the officials in the high school game would play the advantage. Trinity clearly had possession of the ball. Yes. And by whistling the ball down, you kind of give the Mustangs an opportunity to come back. I mean, it's great for Laurel Highlands. Sure. But you have a team that has possession of the ball. Let them continue that sequence. It's kind of like the situation in basketball with the shot clock. We see that often yeah. where the other team is getting the, the basketball and the shot clock expires and they make them stop, stop a potential clock, fast quit. break. Yep. Clark Kellogg always bemoans that every time I watch a game with him. There's going to be a foul called on Trinity's Jacob John. He thought it was clean. And the Mustangs already up one. Opportunity to get an early insurance goal. Less than 15 minutes in. Caton Rulva Cabo will take it. This from about 35 yards out here on the near side. Watch for the break here from the Top of the 18-yard box as Rova Cabo with the boots. Nice little send-in. The Mustangs are able to knock it down, and you have Mateo Laseco trying to break back out there for Trinity. Mustangs pick up possession again. 
A little cross intended there for Bruzday, intercepted by Ryan Torboli, the Trinity keeper. And there's Ruva Kaba initiating a little backside contact with Owen Baker. We play on. Hillers with the balls. They try to work it through the midfield. Off on the far wing, 24-36 left here in the first half. Mustangs an early 1-0 lead here at home. And the Mustangs have been competitive really throughout the course of the season. Even like a Thomas Jefferson top team in the conference. Both of the Mustangs losses against the Jags this year by scores of one to nothing. Wow, well, that's nothing to hang your head about there. So there's really not that much of a difference between the top sure. team in the conference and the sixth place team in the conference. Yeah, the I think discrepancies in the scores tell you a lot if you're getting blown out every game, that's one story. But if you're losing one nothing, yeah. that's a whole different story. Yeah, it just shows you're really in the game. Mustangs last time out defeated Albert Gallatin three to two. Colonials have improved over the last couple of years. They've been competitive, and like the Mustangs this year, just trying to take that next step. Hillers again trying to set it up here. Need Hamilton picking it up. And touch Bendishaw, now LASIK up the field to the Mustangs leading goal scorer, Thatcher Wilson, who gets Ooh. tripped up. Yeah. But nothing called there, Nick. Yeah, interesting. And Owen That's... Baker, the ruling is Baker got all ball, knocked it out of play. Be a Wilson throw in, goes through Bendishaw back to LASIK. And LASIK knocked down, again, no foul. We play on. Hiller's on the counterattack here to Andy Palm. Palm down the far wing. Did he go out of play? It was yes, a whistle. He did. Yeah. It was over that black line, which is very tough to pick up. You have the black soccer line painted on the dark blue football sideline. Yeah, that is tough. To really tell. It has to be tough for the players as well. And even the officials have complained here that I've talked to, Nick, that they have trouble at times picking up. The exact start of the 18-yard box as well. You have the black on the green there. Yeah, there's so many yeah. different things going on Correct. down there. Field looks great, though, but still. And I think there was you know, maybe a little confusion when the field was put in. I think initially they wanted those lines to be yellow, and they ended up being black because mm. the yellow would certainly be a little bit easier to distinguish. But for, for whatever sure. reason, they went black instead of yellow for the soccer lines. And you sometimes have that confusion. Good ball down to Cole Radcliffe. A little header there from the... Hillers, Zachary Thornburg defensively. Mustangs keep possession. Big blast. Would have been three points on a Friday, but out of play here today from Thatcher Wilson. And then goal kick here for Trinity. And Wilson sent that one, I think, well over the fence down there. Be a tough ball to retrieve. Go on a scavenger hunt. And had a change here for Trinity. Talon Gardner seeing his first match action. Sophomore striker. Harry Radcliffe also back on for Laurel Highlands. wonder how many balls on average they lose a season. Oh, my goodness. Because they can't retrieve. Those that's soccer big. balls aren't cheap either. No, that'd be a great thing to keep track yes. of. I've always wanted to do that at a baseball game, but that's nearly impossible to keep up with. Yeah, soccer balls are You always try to get cheap. those back. Yep. Yeah, certainly. It's not like losing a softball or a baseball, but I'm sure a good number of them get deposited out of the field of play. Well, it's midway through this first half. Still one nothing. Laurel Highlands over Trinity on a Harry Radcliffe goal. Mustangs push it up there again. Thatcher Wilson. And down in Cole Radcliffe's direction. Got knocked down. Hillers try to break back here with Mateo Laseko. Now a touch from John Garcia. Go back to Luke Simpson. We blast out again for the Mustangs. Looking for Radcliffe. Headed there by Laseko. Onto the feet of Andy Palm. And down the far wing, looking for a run here from Owen Baker on the cross. Goes back to the top of the 18. Tyler Johnson sends it high and wide on the near side. Another goal kick here for Laurel Highlands. To mention briefly the resurgence of this Trinity soccer program, mention the Mustangs. Had made the playoffs in six straight seasons. Trinity actually went from 2013, going all the way back to 1997 without making the WPIL playoffs. And since 2014, when they lost a first-round playoff game to knock, as the Mustangs try to set something up here, Courtney Weston throwing a lot back on the other side from Connor Smith. Trinity with... 
Only one season where they have not made the playoffs since 2014. That was back in 2018. Still had a winning wow. record at 10-7. and seven, Just missed out. Also picked up the school's first playoff win in school history over Kiski area back in 2019. It's fascinating to see those trends in all sports. Teams can go on long droughts and then have long runs where they're in the postseason every year. So, And when Trinity had that drought from 97 to 2013, only one season above 500, that was back in 98. That's going on, yeah, what, have 25 years ago? down here yeah. in front of the benches. The yellow card issue down there? I believe it was, Brian. Down to the Trinity bench. A lot of jawing, maybe. Hard to hear anything up here. Who's that, Jason? Okay. Jason Taylor's telling me that Ian Hamilton picked up a yellow, possibly on the Laurel Highland side. He checked out. Dominic Georgiana checking in. So not sure what Hamilton did or said that caused the yellow. And he might have had another yellow flash to the Trinity bench. And there you get a Mustang that gets undercut. That was Harry Radcliffe. A foul called and a yellow card issued as well. It's banged up. Going to Trinity's up. Connor Smith. All kinds of cards. Now, it's not what you want to see if your head coach, Richie Colasar, of the Laurel Highlands football team. No, not at all. And he's down writhing in pain at the 38-yard line. Now they need a trainer out here. Bill Logue, the Mustang trainer. Not sure where he's at right now. Now Radcliffe getting up. That's good news there. Now Bill's making his way out, but Harry being helped off. He's left ankle there, Nick. You're not putting any weight on that left leg, and not great to see. I see Georgiana checked in for Hamilton after the first yellow card. I mentioned Connor Smith just picked up the yellow for Trinity. And Evan O'Brien just checked in here for Radcliffe. Yeah, we mentioned Harry was not 100% coming in. And such a weapon on the football field as sure. well, Nick. Set a school record earlier on this year, 53-yard field goal. Yes, he's been our play of the game more than once this year. Yes. Not often in a high school football game, the play of the game is a field goal, but that's how good he's been this year. He had the game-winning kick against Greater Latrobe in a 10-7 win as well right before halftime. Teams didn't score yeah. the entire second half of that game. Here's Bryce Bendishaw. Two hillers around him, and Bendishaw will be called for the foul. Actually ran into teammate Courtney Weston there as well. There's all kinds of question marks right now. 1840. Left here in the first half. We'll have to check in with Coach Colasar tomorrow morning, try to find out the status of Harry. Again, we hope he's all right. Now you'll have Evan O'Brien. Send it back over. The Mustangs will have a free kick. And there's been kind of a rivalry that exists here on the pitch between Laurel Highlands and Trinity over the years. Until things have been a little chippy here in the opening 22 minutes. Rulva Caba sending it down the field. Go on a line to Ryan Torboli, the Trinity keeper. In for the Hill. And Jace Jordan also checked in on the Trinity side, number 17. And he came in for Smith after Smith's yellow card. There's Bendishaw trying to work there for the Mustangs. Pulled back to Rulva Caba. Tim Lasik coming over as well as you had Luke Thornburg trying to work it up the field. And they do send it down there to Andy Palm. And then Palm with more contact there. I think that's Cooper Hunt. Now Ruva Caba. Ruva Caba and Palm colliding on the far side. And the Hillers will get a free kick. This game not short on contact, Nick. No, not at all. Very physical out there. Preview of the high school football slate tomorrow night. Yes. Again, we'll have the Mustangs and the Trinity Hillers. There'll be a joint broadcast with South Union and WMBS, Jerry Dupay back behind the camera. Steve Superk and Gary Frankhauser will be with me. 
Hard to believe, well, there's just three weeks left in the regular season. Yeah, high school That's amazing. This fall has flown by. I mean, high school soccer wrapping up this week. And as far as the regular season there as well, a little action here in front of Simpson. Ball comes free, will turn and shoot, and then on the far side deflect it in. Yeah. And the Hillers tie this game at one. It's a little deflection off the far post on the break. And tying it up there for Trinity, number 20, Talon Gardner, just checked into the match. Yeah, what a way to start. Comes in off the deflection, gets it in the back of the net, and whole new ball game now, 1-1 with 16.40 to go in the first. So Gardner checks in. Ties the game up at 1 here, the 16.40 mark. Now the Mustangs must regroup. You kind of had a little mini onslaught there. Had Simpson out of position. And Harry Radcliffe's Nick, good news. Well, that's great to see, yes. Back on the field for Laurel Highlands. And the way he was down, it was doubtful to me. He wasn't so putting any pressure people, on that left yeah. foot. Just like that, he's back on the field. So good to he's see. He's a grinder, yeah. Rulacaba back to Simpson. Simpson feeling a little pressure. The Mustangs with the control. Going back over to Harry. I'm sure Harry wants to savor this as well. I mean, if you're Harry Radcliffe, you don't know if you're going to really play a competitive college match if you decide to take the football routes. Sure. I'm sure to he's savor all this in. Thinking about that. Plays a lot of travel soccer. I'm a member of the Beedling and Riverhounds programs over the years as well. Riverhounds are quite a successful franchise. And, and they've built up a great junior program around the area yes. as well. And that's, I think, you talk about youth development and giving back to the community. I think that's something, you know, they've done well. And we're going to have another official's timeout here. We're going to get another card here on the bench. Coach Trinity is really coach is hot. Going off, yes. Get him out of here, please. Get out of here. They're going to push him back over there. We thought we saw a card issued to the Hillers bench earlier. Yeah, somebody's been making a lot of noise down there, that's for sure. And now the officials talking to Jerry Rogers Sr. and Jr. down there on the Mustang bench. You mentioned last night during the broadcast, going back a couple of years ago, Jerry Jr. picked up a red card here against Trinity. That was the famous game where he picked up the far corner flag, threw it on the field, then <laughs> picked it back up and put it back nicely. Oh, my. Well, hey, emotions get the best yes. of you. <laughs> and Jerry's usually pretty level-headed. Let's put it this way. He's more level-headed than I am. Wow. <laughs> Hard to believe. No, isn't it? No. I don't know what to say. Near South Whatever you Braden say, boss. Nice. There's Georgiana. A little pressure there from Tyler Johnson. And go out of play. And Simpson will put it down for another goal kick. Match tied at one as we go under 15 minutes left here in the first half. To down, and Harry Radcliffe heads it along. And for another one there from Courtney Weston. Knock it down with the foot. Harry trying to. Send it up to Thatcher Wilson. Look at Harry there for a push on Tucker Proudfitz. And the Hillers will get a free kick here. Zachary Thornburg to take it. Contact there again. We play on. Hillers with it. John Garcia stepping up. Little line drive deflected back here on the near side. And a little poke. And a goal here from Trinity's Braden Knight. So Braden Knight giving Trinity a 2-1 lead over Laurel Highlands. Pretty nice angle there, Nick. Yeah, it was. That Knight goal. Yeah, nice angle, able to get it in. And Trinity with two unanswered goals now, and they certainly have all the momentum here at the 14-15 mark. Yeah, Garner scoring at the 16-40 mark. Now Knight here. About two and a half minutes later. And Trinity leads it two to one. Thatcher Wilson will get things restarted. 
Back to Harry Radcliffe. Boot down on the far side, direction of Courtney Weston. And out of play. Hiller send it in. He's in open space, and Knight's right there. Over in the direction of Tyler Johnson. Lob back in John Garcia's direction. Now Aiden Goring, new entry for Trinity, number six. Sophomore midfielder. Sends it out on the far side. Mustangs will get it back here with Cooper Hunt. Dominic Georgiana checking out. The five minutes is over off of Ian Hamilton's yellow cards. He's able to check back in. It's interesting, Nick, in most other levels of soccer, other than the high school game, you get a yellow, you can stay on the field in the high school game. You have to sit out for five minutes. Cool teams off able period. To, yeah, cool off period. <laughs> teams, able to make a, teams able to make a substitution. Sure. You don't have to play a man down like you would if you have somebody pick up a red. Obviously, two yellows equals a red, so Hamilton right. will have to mind his P's and Q's. Yes. Yes, sir. No, sir, to the yes. official. He's a senior, though, as well for Laurel Highlands. Last game, so I guess he figures <laughs> what does if he, he, have if to he gets tossed, he's yeah, not hey. making the playoffs anyways. It's snow. Go out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> 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 Do the Richard Nixon, you know, peace <laughs> sign. And <laughs> I resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. He doesn't have to serve that match penalty, does no. he? No. Tyler Johnson will actually put the ball down. Thought he was going to take the corner. Will actually be John Garcia here from the near sun. 12 18 left here in the first half. Garcia faking that little kick into the box. And now we'll take it. Mustang's able to flect it out. It's played back there to Connor Smith. Mustang's a poke from Evan O'Brien. Caleb Janoski also there, and he'll body it down and look to break back for the Mustangs. Janoski stopping on a dime, working back to his left between defenders. Caleb Janoski on the run, and he's going to get called for an offensive foul. Wow. Almost just seemed like just fell Goring down. fell down. Yeah, just slipped, which happens. Again, what do I know? But it looked like he just slipped there. That's one of those that I think he just let go. I would think let him play. I mean, I could see if it's getting chippy and guys are getting decked, but that's just, I think, you know, very incidental, incidental contact. He has the ball. He's going forward. I think the honest on the defender there. Here's Harry back down the field again. We'll send along from Weston to Wilson. Back to Weston again. And then poked out there from Gearing. Back to Rulva Cabo line drive. Right on to Good Ryan save. Torboli. And some pretty good pace on it. 10.49 left here in the first half. Still 2-1. Hillers over the Mustangs. Got our broadcast brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Dr. Calabrese, Ruth Hart, Stokes and Hoppy. Zebley Mahalov and Whites. Business and bankruptcy attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Fernan, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Fine Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Road, Union Town, in front of the Fayette Plaza, and the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Boosters. Another change, Evan O'Brien out, Tim Lasik back in for the Mustangs. So we go under 10 minutes left here in the first half. Mustang throwing from the far side. And get poked out there by Jacob John. Skied in the air. John Garcia there for Trinity. Goes back to the Mustangs. Caleb Janoski looks to step up. On the counter. Good ball there from Owen Baker. Baker settling it off to Talon Gardner. Gardner back to Baker. Baker 25 yards out trying to dance in. The flex in open space here again to Braden Knight. Knight steps back up. Baker off to his left. Tyler Johnson with a clear shot. Goes low. Good save there from Luke Simpson of Laurel Highlands. Yeah, great save. Right side of the box. Baker again. Hamilton a partial block. You have Bryce Bendishaw down. 
A little cycle attempt there from Cooper Hunt sends it out of play. Trinity will make another change as Baker will send it back in. Mustangs get a piece of it. Going to look out here. Tyler Johnson on the doorstep. Janoski with a clear. Is looking up the field for Thatcher. Wilson was knocked down by Connor Smith. Radcliffe. Poke back again from Smith. You have Mateo Laseko back in on the Trinity side. As Thatcher Wilson picks up the loose ball. On the poke, trying to find Courtney Weston. Hillers get to the ball first and send it back to Ryan Torboli. 8.24 left before halftime. Simpson down to Bendishaw. Trying to push it forward. Yanoski getting a piece of it there for the Mustangs. And then again, another send down. Good send down indeed. Courtney Weston trying to track it down. Scooped up again by Torboli. With 8.06 left here in the first half. Torboli from the top of the box. Blast it back to center. Rulva Cobb, a little misplay there. Setting up Owen Baker trying to run back. Yanoski defending. Able to get back to the ball. Springs free again to Tyler Johnson. Play whistled down. We get a Trinity foul on a Mustang free kick from their own zone. Ruva Caba gets it started again. Looking there for Thatcher. Wilson went off the hiller and over to Harry Radcliffe. Radcliffe scoring the only Mustang goal. Through ball, no one home. Back to Torboli again for another scoop up. Hillers will play Washington on Saturday. A little primer for the playoffs. Local game down there in Washington County. Trinity and Washington. Yes. No, it's true you can see those two schools from, I mean, if you're a they're Trinity, you can close, see they're yeah. very close yeah. from what I understand. Never been there. Trinity's football team actually plays the middle school, and they're actually renovating that football field. They're actually headed down to the game tomorrow. They're going to have shuttle parking. Oh. You can't, can't actually park at the school. Not to get shuttled to the field. Well, enjoy the accommodations. Yes. Hopefully the food's good for you. Well, hopefully we could park. Close. Yes. Well. I even said a nice little countdown. Did you notice that? I think National Anthem at what, 651 tomorrow? Yes, I saw little, like, that on the email. How about like that? that? Yeah. It's like we're doing an NFL I, game. I told you, they're very organized now. I would Richie, say Richie, 651 staff, Anthem. Nice yeah. Lineups at 53. 53. And <laughs> how about that? We'll line everything up. Yes. Jason. Taylor asked if he gives my name. Can he park for free now? I'll probably be there before anybody else gets down there. You'll be there, yeah. Unless you're getting there before 4 o'clock. I can guarantee one thing. <laughs> when I get in the office in the afternoon, you will not be there. <laughs> when I stroll in at 4, you'll probably already be in the booth at 4. Yeah. Told Jerry I'm picking him up around 3 and we'll head down. Nice. Enjoy. Enjoy Washington County. Yep. Mustangs, two road games left. They'll wrap up the season at Connellsville. As Owen Baker looking for the run down. Rulva Kava playing it back to Luke Sims. What's interesting there, too, as well, Nick, Connellsville doing stadium construction as well. They have the oh. what's normally the away bleachers closed off completely Oh man! at their football stadium. Falcons doing some work. Yeah, see the Falcons and the Hillers down renovating what, their facility. Johnny Lujak Field. Or? Yeah. Maybe the renovations will be Lujak Field. Yeah. I mean, I saw a statue down there. I don't know do. if you've ever been down to check that out. Yep. Great history at Connellsville. My yes. goodness. Woodruff and Blue Jack. Mustangs again. Simpson looking there for Bendisha over to Lasik. And Aiden Gearing. Get a piece of it, and Gearing stepping back in again there for Trinity for Cooper Hunts. Looks to push it down to Courtney Weston. Bryce Bendishaw stepping in down the near boundary, trying to make something happen here for the Mustangs. Laurel Highland struck first. Trinity with two unanswered lead, two to one here in the final five minutes of the first half. Thatcher Wilson back to Lasik. Tice touch from Bendishaw. And get back over to Weston. Got intercepted. Hillers again on the counterattack. Open space here on the near side, Owen Baker. Baker going up the middle, no one there. Rolls back to Luke Simpson. 
Simpson, another liner back to center. Harry trying to head it along. Settled back, though, by Trinity's Connor Smith. Hamilton stepping back in for the Mustangs. Bendishaw, the send ahead, looking for Thatcher Wilson. Couldn't get it back in the direction of Hamilton. He was trying to step up into the play as a defender, looking for the break down the far side. Mustangs again try to set it up with Cole Radcliffe. Wilson has it now as Radcliffe off to his right, and that ball a little bit too far there for Cole. And Ryan Torboli picks it up again on the Trinity side. So Radcliffe, the lone goal for the Mustangs. Talon Gardner and Braden Knight scoring here tonight for Trinity. 3.29 left here in the first half. Our Highlands girls we had for here last night fell 3-2 to, to Ringgold. They needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. They do have one final game left in their regular season. On the road Monday at Connellsville to wrap things up. This is our final soccer broadcast of the year here on the South Union Township Sports Network, our 10th of the season. Appreciate you joining us for it and how Trinity looking for another goal. Appreciate the folks at South Union allowing me back for another season of doing this. A lot of fun. You love your soccer, Brian, yes. and it shows. Thatcher Wilson back to Courtney Weston. Harry Radcliffe. A little poke back to Bryce Bendishaw. 2.40 left before halftime. Mustangs to Courtney Weston. Weston trying to stay with it. Works off to his right, went down. We play on. Rovacaba a touch. Down the near boundary. Now blast high and wide here on the near side. Trying wide to right. goal kick. And you'll have a lot of soccer to watch here over the next couple of months with the World Cup. Oh, absolutely. Starting in November. Like, very rare to have the yeah. World Cup around the holidays. Usually always in the summer. but It was too hot in Qatar. Yeah. Yes. I've heard it pronounced Qatar as well. Yeah, I don't, it's <laughs> Qatar, Qatar. I don't think anybody really knows how to say it. but It's going to be interesting to see how the games are played over there. I think sure. there's a lot of controversy with that World Cup bid they got. Now, the last time it was in the U.S. was 94. No, will be coming back here in 2026. Yeah. Joint bid with Mexico and Canada. The finals will be in the U.S. That was a great documentary. A Actually, we'll have an expanded World Cup, too. More teams getting in than going from. Yeah. I, I know that like fact about. 24 to 32 or 32 yeah. to 40. I know it's expanded from what it was. Okay. That was more nations to participate. Sure. U.S. didn't get in last go-around back in 2018. No, they did not. Here's Tim Lasik. And, of course, the star for them. I'm sure you're well aware. The kid from Hershey, Christian Pulisic. Pulisic. Yep. Yeah. Playing He's for something. Chelsea in the Premier League. Yeah. One minute remaining in The Team USA, their last couple of friendlies they've had leading up to the World Cup, not exactly in great form. They tied Saudi Arabia, if I remember right, in our last match. He had a loss right before that. Always tough, though, to you know, try to get that team chemistry when everyone plays for their own clubs. Oh, sure. And it's like an all-star team. And then you try to come together for a couple of matches. Mustangs trying to tie it up here before halftime. Bendishaw breaking down on the far side. Played back, and that blast partially blocked. That's Courtney Weston taking it. Flex back to Harry Radcliffe. Now 18 seconds left. Down in the box to Thatcher Wilson. Couldn't get a piece of it there in front of Ryan Torboli. I'll just about do it. Ten seconds left before the half. Torboli will blast it back towards center. Down to three, down to two, down to one, and that'll do it. At halftime, your score, the Trinity Hillers, two, and the Laurel Highlands Mustangs, one. Reminder, our coverage here on the South Union Township Sports Network brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Union Town and Agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Union Town. Dr. Kyle Bruce, Ruth Hart, Stokes and Hoppy. Zeppeli Mahal of White, Union Town Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Fine Furniture, 601. Pittsburgh Road, Uniontown in front of the Fayette Plaza and the Laurel Highlands. Boys soccer boosters. First half scoring recap. Harry Radcliffe got things started for Laurel Highlands at the 34-30 mark to give the Mustangs a 1-0 lead. But Taylor Gardner and Braden Knight 
coming back with goals on the Trinity side as the Hillers lead it 2-1. to one. A reminder, if you're watching this game on Breezeline or Armstrong Cable, I'd like to let you know that all of our South Union Township Sports Network games and programs available online live. It's easy to find. Just log on to YouTube.com for the archive and search South Union Television. Or follow the South Union Township Sports Network on Facebook for live program updates. Facebook.com slash South Union TV. Get your halftime score, Trinity 2, Laurel Highlands 1. Second half match action comes your way next here on the South Union Township Sports Network.
Just about ready for the second half. 2-1, the Trinity Hillers leading the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Final half of the season for the Laurel Highlands boys soccer team. Trying to rally back from a 2-1 deficit to get confirmation that Hamilton's red car, or yellow car, excuse me, yellow car is for a push from behind after the play. Hillers will work left to right as we describe it here in the second half. And the Mustangs getting their lone goal from Harry Radcliffe, Talon Gardner, and Braden Knight coming back with goals on the Trinity side as the Hillers lead 2-1. to one. Hamilton over to Cooper Hunts. Back to Caleb Yanoski on the far side here for Laurel Highlands. And a good ball. If it's on sides, no, it's not. Mm. To Thatcher Wilson. I knew it was going to be close because he got back Indeed, there and yeah, pretty a quickly. Opportunity, yeah. I was almost waiting for the arm to come down there. Holding your breath. Doesn't go the Mustangs' way, but no, only two not. to one. Things cooling off out there as well. Oh, my. Not a short sleeve night. No, and you wore your short sleeves tonight no. as well. Pretty warm this oh, morning, actually. Me. Cooled off. It was. Very warm last day, night. Yeah. yeah, but it feels like an October evening, yeah. and that's what it They're is. They're actually calling for snow next week, believe it yeah, or not. Yeah, Tuesday, yeah. So uh, golf and grass cutting could be yeah, off for a while. Done. I know you're upset about the golf part. Yeah, I think grass cutting about done for the year. Yeah, Get thank one gosh. or two more cuts in, and then I'll do it. You play golf every month of the year, don't you? No, I don't. I wish I had time no. to. If I had time to, I probably would try to. It's just... All right. I'll do start doing some games for you. Yeah, we still we do too many basketball games. That's <laughs> yeah, the, basketball. Hey, well, I'll try that's, to that's the problem unload the your burden. Oh, this LASIK Ooh. hit that one high. Went right off of Bryce Bendishaw. Yeah. The line drive right in the face. And I felt good there. That'll wake you up, though, on a chilly yes, evening. My goodness, that's whew, like a five-hour energy to the face. Yes. And a lot of cups of hot chocolate in the stands tonight sure. as well. Hillers lead it two to one. I'm sure Soup Harry, will have one tomorrow night. Harry Ratcliffe sending it along. And he likes to stay warm. We'll have his... Have a hot dog maybe tomorrow. His bright orange jacket. I'll be my guest nice. tomorrow if it's cold. Those ones, you'll see him coming in from a mile away. I have a feeling his, he might be in Morgantown Hunter's tonight. Jacket. West Virginia has a game tonight. I actually heard he that there's there. more, uh, a lot of fans down there that look like uh, empty seats. Uh-oh. <laughs> so not a very good crowd. Well, they've yet there. to recover from their lost pit week one. I uh, guess, yeah, they've s struggled to recover a little bit. I mentioned the Penguins were off to a 3 nothing lead after one. Our good buddy, one of our sponsors tonight here, Chess uh, Rich Lacey from Chessler's Fine Furniture, passing along. That score to us. We appreciate that. And Rich tells us no sellout of the Pens game tonight either. Wow. Well, maybe a weeknight, a bad team, but still it's your season and home opener. Yeah. That's I know you fans like to, going to games these days. You like to go to a lot of games. Yes. And they have a game Saturday against Tampa Bay. Won two yeah. of the last three cups. You would think they should get a pretty good crowd for that one. Saturday night, Tampa sure. Bay coming into town. And stay overnight and watch uh, Tom Brady have his way with the Steelers Sunday. Sorry, I'm trying to be optimistic, <laughs> but it's hard. Steelers are uh, dreadful at the moment. I'm a realist, even though I'm a big Steeler fan. Thornburg had it poked out of play. They'll reload back in here to Aiden Gearing. Just over three minutes into the second half. Still 2-1. Hillers over the Mustangs. Bryce Bendishaw off to Harry Radcliffe. And poke it over to Tim Lasick. Played back. Harry went down. We go the other way. Owen Baker trying to get things set up there for Trinity. Didn't happen. Ian Hamilton coming back the other way. Sent in the direction of, excuse me, Thatcher Wilson. Jason Taylor tells me 24-17 Baylor over West Virginia. Nope. Mustangs play on here. A little blast going wide on the far side. Merle Highland's getting a little pressure there. Well, How's certainly a great night for soccer and football. That was Cole Radcliffe on that last shot there for the Mustangs. Number eight. Playing his last high school game with his brother Harry, who will graduate in the spring. Whistle and a foul called there on Trinity. Or excuse me, on Laurel Highlands. Free kick for Trinity. Four and a half minutes into the second half. Hiller's angle it off here on the near side to Luke Thornburg. 
Good block from Bryce Bendishon. That was. Thornburg trying to regain another cross. Actually went off of Owen Baker and out. Your Mustang throwing. You know, quitting the Mustangs, even though it's a chilly night and they're out of the playoffs. Actually went off the back line, so goal kick not a throw and angled over to Cooper Hunt. Touch from LASIK. Back to Ian Hamilton. Poked forward and then headed there by Jacob John for Trinity. Mentioned the Mustangs seniors playing their final game here today. Eric Reed, Evan O'Brien, Caleb Yanoski, Harry Radcliffe, Ian Hamilton, and Aaron Broadwater also on the roster. I understand Aaron not dressed tonight. Again, congratulations to all those Mustang seniors on a great career. Absolutely. Good luck in the future. Yes. There's Courtney Weston. Nice run down the far wing for the Mustangs. Weston, a low hopper there. Ryan Torboli makes the save. Actually had the senior nights back in September for both the boys and girls soccer teams. Oh, wow. A little early this year. I think one of the reasons in case these games were really pivotal as far as the conference standings and making the WPIL playoffs. They wanted to give the seniors an opportunity, a lot of the kids that don't get an opportunity to play, to start and get in those games. Well, that makes sense. Let's go, let's go, set up. Yeah, you're just accustomed to all these sports to having senior night and homecoming and all that, yeah. the different, you know. Plus, you got a little warmer weather in September as well. A little Certainly. cooler now. You yeah. figure this would be the senior night game on a yes. it's a cold night. Chilly night. Got it out of the way early. One deflected out. Another goal kick here for the Mustangs. 33-35 left here in regulation time. 2-1 Hillers over the Mustangs. Get our coverage here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes. United Bank, Davis and Davis Attorneys at Law. Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor. Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown. Dr. Calabri, Sweetheart, Stokes and Hoppy. Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys. South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott. Chessler's Fine Furniture, 601 Pittsburgh Road, Union Town, in front of the Fayette Plaza, and the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Boosters. Thanks to one and all. Yes. Always great to see those high school logs always filled up, and yep. same with these games. Thanks to all the local businesses. I think for next year for these soccer games, Nick needed to maybe get the uh, – Sponsor businesses maybe up rotating in the right hand corner of the screen. Like That'd be do. great, That's yes. One of the things we'll to talk to the on. board. We'll talk to the Godfather. Yeah. See if we can get that to happen next year. There's Cooper Hunts. Line drive into the box. A good scoop up there from Torboli. He's really played well, and you couldn't fault him at all for that first Terry Radcliffe goal because Harry put that one top right where Torboli had no chance at all of getting to it with the pace that Harry sent that shot in. Have Tony Miola would have trouble getting that one, right? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> I understand that reference. Like I when, I dropped, to, when I, I dropped a Louis T on. Of, of a goalie that you would uh, know. I, I Faintly, yes. Kind of like when I dropped a Louis T on reference during yeah. a baseball game. Yeah, you know. I was like, who's that? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. You know your stuff. You don't know everyone. I'm a freak. I mean, I have no friends. Guys had Lanny for Terry on WMBS the we other We did, night. absolutely. Yes, you and Doug Saltzman and Snatcher Wilson, a nice little run there and guys were actually reminiscing about the last baseball game that a lot of folks around the area really cared about back in 1992. I'm guessing you remember where you were 30 years ago tomorrow night. I was throwing a remote control at the I end of the night. I don't blame you. Yep. Probably wanted to break a TV. Doug yeah, Drabeck horrible night. favorite pirate growing up got the start that night. He did. And he str actually struggled in that NLCS. He was 0-2 going into that game. Actually ended up 0-3. Sure. And they, they were down, well that night. They were down 3-1 in the series on Wakefield and Walk. Both had great starts. Correct. To get to Game 7 of a Smoltz versus Drabeck. And Pirates were, of course, three outs away from the World Series and did not happen. You had that error from Jose, Jose Leand. Leand. Yep. A ball that Cecil Espy should have caught in right field. Yep. Yeah. And, of course, the Bonds throw, which was not the worst play in that game. And I was the last never one. a Stan Belinda fan, and that um, he didn't really no, no. do anything to help the cause there at all. He kind of wondered in that situation, did you have anybody else available as Hamilton commits a foul there on Andy Palm? Did you have any other options there coming in other than Belinda and then I? I know Drebeck was probably about, what, 120 pitches, 120 pitches? Probably, yeah. 
at the time. I mean, you're up two to one. You think you can get the last three outs, but the Braves had such a great lineup, and it was some no name off the bench, Francisco Cabrera, that was the yep. hero. Yeah. Yeah, but enough about that. That was yeah. It's a bring up more bad memories. Yeah. Have you gone back and last point on that? Have you gone back and watched that? I have. Times? Yeah, I yeah. have. I mean, I obviously didn't watch it originally. I, I have watched it. Yeah, you weren't even born yet. I then, was were not. You? No. I was not. I'm glad I missed that. Sent it down in Thatcher Wilson's direction again. Thatcher went down. And there you had that little area right on the sidelines, and it shouldn't be more slick than the other area of the field. We've talked about that a lot throughout the course of the season. Sometimes you see guys slip in that area for whatever reason. That one poked out of play. Yeah, Trinity throw in here, 29-38 left in regulation time. Hillers make a change as Aiden Goring checking out. We had Mateo Laseco coming back in on the Trinity side. That one poked out off of Ruva Caba and out. Hiller's looking for an insurance goal. Again, they entered play today. Third place team in the conference behind Thomas Jefferson and Bethel Park. Bethel Park actually moved down from 4A to 3A in the offseason. Had the Bethel Park Laurel Highlands game here for you earlier on this year, and the Mustangs actually came into that game favorites, and Bethel Park got off to an 0-3 start, and since then they've been pretty much lights out as well and really have played well. A free kick here from Laurel Highlands. Rulva Kaba blasting into the box. Ball comes loose. Opportunity here out in front. Where's the ball at? And somehow Covers diving back there, Torboli. My goodness. I don't know how he got back to the ball, but he did there, Nick, to make the either. save. It's a great cover up. Ball got behind him. It was certainly dangerous. The Almost Mustangs the game just couldn't get, to, a, get yep. to the ball or really generate a shot. Golden opportunity for the Mustangs, but still plenty of time to get that tying goal. 28 minutes, exactly. Torboli with it right now, taking his time. Blasted back towards center. Intended there for Andy Palm. Mustangs deflected back. Cole Radcliffe in the direction of Thatcher Wilson. Cole trying to step back in, but Hillers send it back on the far side. We'll touch there again from Ruba Cabo. And Hiller sent it into their bench. Mustang cheerleaders as they were last night for the Laurel Highlands girls out here supporting the boys soccer team. Good to see. Always talk about the cheerleaders out at the football games. They come out to the other sporting events as well as you had a Hiller get tripped up. Foul called there on the Mustangs. You get a Trinity free kick here from about 42 yards out. Blast from 42 outs, headed along and going out of play there as John Garcia got a piece of it for sending it out. And Luke Simpson will put it back down on the Laurel Highland side. And our final soccer broadcast of the year here on the South Union Township Sports Network. Have these same two schools in action tomorrow. High school football from Trinity High School. Hiller Stadium, actually their middle school field. And here's Courtney Weston on the run. And Torboli able to clear it out on the far side. Mustangs reload again. LASIK. Not a play. Courtney Weston into Rulva Cava. Spun back. Look out here. Tyler Johnson on the attack. Harry Radcliffe slows it down. Nice little slide tackle there from Harry. He goes between defenders, trying to stay with it. Tries to get back into the play. Harry's still battling. Last varsity soccer game, giving it his all. I think he got called for the foul. He did. Heller is getting it going quickly again. Down the field to Owen Baker. Into the box, a little collision there on Luke Simpson. Baker keeps it alive, shot on and blocked out in front. 
Great block there on the Mustang side by Caleb Janoski. To slow down that run, you had both Baker and Andy Palm there. They beat Luke Simpson, but Janoski, the last line of defense, able to make the save. Very impressive, Nick. Absolutely. Certainly it's been great action here in the second. And down Hamilton goes, uh, knocking down Owen Baker. And uh-oh, uh-oh, Nick. Ha on the yellow card already. Yeah. Picks up another yellow card that's two yellows. That's a red. You know what's coming out here. Red card shown to Ian Hamilton. And he's gone. Yeah, you don't want to see that, obviously. I didn't think that last foul was very malicious by no, any means. Not sure if it warranted that. No, it did not warrant the yellow. But now the Mustangs will have to be playing with 10 for the rest of the way. And Hamilton sent off with... 25-05 left here in the second half. Mustang fans don't like it. That's why you got to watch picking up those first yellows sometimes. Sure. But once you have one, got to watch out like playing with four fouls. Yep. And he doesn't have to worry about a match suspension, though, Nick. No. Mustang not senior. Blazing not the way, glory. though, you want to end your career. No, it's not. But I'm sure when he looks back at his career, he won't remember that. Yeah. He'll remember the, it's a pat on the back totality of it. Yeah. yeah, The pat on the back from our Highlands assistant, Jerry Rogers, Jr. He'll take off the gear for a final time. The clock stops, 25.05. Waiting for a resumption. Again, the Mustangs cannot make a substitution. They'll have to play with 10, a man down the rest of the way. Referees taking a little extra time here. Yes, they are. Make sure they have everything situated. Still waiting for the go-ahead here from the officials. And we got it. Clock rolling again. Hiller's free kick, 44 yards out. And the blast going high from Too much Connor Smith. Too much air under that one. Yep. Yeah. Certainly have to make some adjustments now, Nick. A man down, a goal down in the match as well. Make it tough for Laurel Highlands the rest of the way, playing shorthanded. Certainly will. Luke Simpson sends it out. Cole Radcliffe there. Hillers knock it back down. Got past Tim Lasick. Come forward, Owen Baker in the box. Baker trying to work back to his left. And he'll one-hop it over to Luke Simpson. Simpson on the lawn, back towards the midfield. Luke Thornburg pushing it up here on the run. Down to John Garcia. Back into the box. The Mustang down. Caleb Yanoski will break out. Yanoski line drive forward. You had Thatcher Wilson breaking. and never got the ball in Thatcher's direction. Bryce Bendishaw will pick it up. And Bendishaw staying with it here for the Mustangs. Bendishaw chipped there over to Thatcher Wilson. Wilson off balance shot. And the save made once again by Thorn or by Torboli, excuse me. 23-34 left in a regulation time. Torboli back to center. Again, angled back off here on the near side. Cooper Hunts sending it out of play. In our match coverage, brought to you by the Sprouse Insurance Group in Uniontown and Agent David Hughes, United Bank, Davis and Davis, Attorneys at Law, Jason Scott, South Union Township Supervisor, Southwestern Gastrointestinal Specialist, SWGI in Uniontown, Zebley Mahalov and White, Uniontown Business and Bankruptcy Attorneys, South Union Township Supervisors, Robert Schiffbauer, Rick Vernon and Jason Scott, and Chessler's Ooh. Fine Furniture as they ring one off the crossbar. Yeah, it did. They rolled it out of play. The goal kick. Of course, the Laurel Highlands Boys Soccer Boosters also sponsoring the coverage here today. Back to the midfield. Mustangs looking for another break here with Courtney Weston. Hiller Sky at back. Tim Lasick. Now Bryce Bendishaw. Seiko there on the Trinity side. Lasik there for the Mustangs. Look out, Bendishaw. 
And Mateo Laseko, we're going at it. Now Laseko pulls down Bendishaw. I think we're going to get another card here, Nick. Seems to be that way. Certainly getting chippy out there. And those two actually got in each other's faces. Laseko picks up the yellow. Twenty-two fourteen left here in the second half. Trendy fans saying that Bendishaw made a little high contact, and then the, a couple of the Mustang fans saying that Laseko actually took a shot at Bendishaw. Be interesting. Hopefully, the officials can reel these yeah, guys in the get, rest uh, of the way. out of control again. Yeah. So Laseko has to take a seat for five. You also have Connor Smith on a yellow as well on the Trinity side. Picked one up earlier. Now Ruba Kaba to take the free kick. Good blast there. And a save made by Torboli. Torboli takes it to the top of the box. Back in Ruba Kaba's direction, trying to angle it off to Cole Radcliffe. Goes out of play. The yeah, Trinity throwing with 21.53 left in regulation. Mustang still really playing hard, Nick, and there's nothing on the line. Certainly, yeah, good to see that He's here in the last game. playing for pride. Game. Sure. A win's a win. You always want to win if you're out there. Yanoski sending it high. Still playing with a lot of emotion. It's good to see. More contact there in the box. Tyler Johnson looking for the cross because an open space. Luke Thornburg, a blast going wide here on the near side. A couple more changes, one on each side. Cole Radcliffe checking out now for the Mustangs. He's limping a little bit. And you have an O'Brien checked in there. And you have Owen Baker out on the Trinity side. And a confirmation for who checked in there for Trinity. Looks like Andy Palm back in on the Hiller side. And Palm trying to get on the ball. Another Hiller down. Another foul called here on the Mustangs. Yeah, again. Now Yanoski didn't want to give the ball up. Fans make a noise. And we're going to get another card here. My goodness. Officials stopping it. You might have Yanoski for delay a game. That's what it's going to be. Wow. My goodness, yeah, we've seen our fair share of cards tonight. The official, uh, Yanoski, saying he was being grabbed by the Trinity player. And that's why he didn't give the ball back, but the official saw him not giving the ball up on the free kick. So they issued the yellow to Yanoski here at the 20-39 mark. Almost going through the whole deck here tonight, Nick. Pretty much, yeah, my <laughs> gosh. That's a fifth total Deal card on. I think we've seen. That's a lot. That's an unusually high number, yeah. I would imagine. You see more yet. games than me. No, 20 minutes to go. A free kick here for the Hillers, Still 35 yards one out. One goal match. Connor Smith will take this one, and he's one of the players sitting on a yellow. Smith with a little... Lob, header, going wide of Luke Simpson was offsides anyways. And a free kick here for the Mustangs. Now they threw two balls out of the field. Only need one. Just one at a time. <laughs> Just one ball at a time. Ruva Kaba to take it. Knocked down there again by Connor Smith. Sent forward. Good ball with a little operating room here is Gardner. And the Mustangs. They would make the denial and turn it back down the field. Looking for Bendishaw. Poke back Luke Thornburg. Again looking for Gardner. Roll back in Luke Simpson's direction. A little token pressure there from Andy Palm. This Mustangs sent it in Evan O'Brien's direction. But the Hillers quickly pick the ball back up. 
Again, the Mustangs playing a man short after the Hamilton red card, and that one missing well wide from Owen Baker. Now to play another Mustang goal kick, and Cole Radcliffe back in here on the Laurel Highland side, replacing Evan O'Brien. Luke Simpson back to center. Tim Lasick finds it. Now on to Thatcher Wilson. In Bendishaw's direction. Wilson's picked up a couple of reds this year as well for the Mustangs. And through traffic there, Tyler Johnson goes down. Another foul called here on the Mustangs. And we're going to get another card here, Nick. My goodness. They're going to run out. They go on Cole Radcliffe. Yeah, he's walking off. And so Cole picks up one here at the 1842 mark. Seems like everyone will have one by the end of the game. So we have Cole with one, Yanoski with one, Hamilton's picked up the double yellows. He's got the red. You had the bench yellow on Trinity. Laseko picked one up, and Connor Smith got one in the first half. Was that seven then? Four on the Mustang seven, side, three on the Trinity side. Wow. Still 18.42 left here in the second half. See how many more we get. I think you're going to start seeing more of them on any piece of contact that's more than incidental the rest of the way. The, the referees stay consistent with it. A 2-1 game. It was 2-1 at halftime. Haven't had a goal scored here yet in the second half. Thornburg takes this throw in. Gets it in to Jacob, or check that, Andy Gorig. And the Mustangs able to pick it up going the other way. Just have possession for a moment. Trinity resets here with Andy Palm. Palm on the near side. Good block there from Tim Lasick. So we got under 18 minutes left in regulation. Thornburg to take the throw in. I'll push it back to Andy Gehring. And cleared again by Rulva Kaba. Send that one in the direction of Thatcher Wilson and blasted back by the Hillers looking for Owen Baker and out of play. Seventeen thirty-four left in regulation time. Brian Morozak along with Nick Barczyk is filling in for Jerry Dupay. Jerry's back with us tomorrow. And there you had Courtney Weston. Get run over. Another foul called there on the Hillers. No card this time. And their Mustang free kick. And 51 yards out on the far side. There's Rulva Kaba again. Going on goal. Torboli making the save. Again, sent back to center. Headed there by Harry. With a Thornburg on the near side. Bryce Bendishaw knocks it out of play. Off of Laurel Highlands and out. And Trinity makes a pair of changes. You have Gehring checking out along with Jace Jordan. John Garcia back in. Along with Mateo Laseko, who served his five minutes for his last yellow card. And he had Laseko and Bendisha got into it last time, Nick. And who's right together as soon as... That's right. Laseko comes back out of the field. Bendisha. A uh, nice friendly reunion. Yes. And Laseko battling here again on the near side. So we'll watch that throughout the remaining 16 4 Another whistle here top of the box. Going to be on the offensive side there. A little push on the Hillers. Mustang free kick going the other way. You had those two that just kind of operate in the same position of the field, and don't be surprised if you see another get-together before the night's over. Mustangs blasted back. Bendisha looking for it. It's cleared the other way by Zachary Thornburg. Andy Palm trying to track it down, but 
Ruvacaba there for the Mustangs. Couldn't clear it out. Garcia comes back. John Garcia. Service off to his right to Laseco. Laseco from the near boundary. Going back to his left top of the 18. Knocked down by Paul. who makes a little <laughs> charge there on Simpson. Who's able to make the save with Rubacaba down in front of the top of the box. And Rubacaba a little slow in getting up. And Simpson sends it back to center. Nice play along there from Thatcher Wilson and a little head of steam for the Laurel Highlands and Courtney Weston down on the far side. Contact in the box. We're going to get a penalty kick. No, we are not. Just ruled a goal kick. Wow. Yeah. Interesting officiating this evening. Very unhappy. Fans down below us. Sound like you at a baseball game, Nick. Uh, <laughs> come on, Blue. Yeah, well. Let's, come on, Zebras out there. Come tonight. on, Zebras, exactly. Hey, got to let them know you're First there. First time I saw you at a baseball game, that's all I heard the whole night. Come on, Blue. <laughs> that come was on, the wild Blue. card game. I, a little more fiery at those playoff games than I am during the regular season, Brian. Understandable. And here we go again. Bendishaw, a little contact. Another foul called on the Hillers. Will Bacaba trying to go quickly. Didn't get the go-ahead yet from the officials. Rovacaba with the blast now. On the far side looking for Courtney Weston. Will deflect out of play. With Jacob John defending there for Trinity. Caleb Yanoski served his time for his yellow. Back on the field. Kenny, you don't watch a lot of soccer, but for seeing your first row of two matches of the year, you've seen a lot of action here. Absolutely. I'm enjoying it. Last night, 3 2 yeah. match, and tonight, 2, two to 1 today. with a lot of cards. Yep. My goodness, seeing a lot of fun action. I might have to start watching more. The World Cup, I will definitely watch. Andy Palm went down. Nice little bit of acting there as Rula <laughs> A little bit of a flop. Sends it out of play on the <laughs> far side. I think you see these guys watch a lot of TV. I was even joking with my nephew oh, sure. a little while back. He plays youth soccer, and he got pulled down an outdoor match in the box. And I said, we were actually down. He's like, no, nah, just. <laughs> <laughs> At least he admitted it. That's great. Yeah, kids watch a lot of TV, TV and they, and they, see and they know they're athletes. smart. And, you know, they pick it oh, up. Sure. Even 10, 11-year-olds Oh, in all it. sports, yeah. You know, they're able to pick it up. You see baseball players wiggle the bat like yeah. their favorite player. And he got the card. For, he got the uh, call for it, too, and, oh, and made great. a penalty That's kick, awesome. So it was pretty nice. To, <laughs> he was great. able to capitalize. At least he's that. learning something yes. from watching yes. TV. <laughs> Picking up good lessons. Roll the Cava back into the box. That one scooped up there once again by Ryan Torbali. 12-24 left. It was 2-1 at halftime. Still 2-1. Harry Radcliffe got the scoring started for the Mustangs. Taylor Gardner and Braden Knights with two unanswered for Trinity with all that scoring back in the first half. Haven't had a goal on either side here in the second. Harry Radcliffe trying to even things up in his final high school game. On the far side, good ball to Thatcher Wilson, who blasts, and what a save Great from Torboli. From point-blank range, Wilson, he's still battling. More contact in the box, and we have a penalty kick. Penalty called inside the 18-yard box, and the Mustangs an opportunity here to tie things up with 11.47 left in regulation. Torboli pleading his case to no avail. Yeah, certainly a penalty warranted there and see if the Mustangs can take advantage. I think you'll have Harry Radcliffe taking it here for the Mustangs. You will, looking for the brace tonight. Harry got the scoring started, so it's Radcliffe versus Torbali. Mustangs trying to even things up. Radcliffe with the run-up. And Harry with the blast. Did it hit the post there, Nick? It did not. Just wide. Just wide. And now Torboli kind of talking some smack. Yeah, how about that? I think he touched him, which is not, not great. And the rare miss from Harry. Yeah. Usually pretty spot on from those situations. And a lot of smack talking going on right now. Wow. Absolutely. This is heated. Now, I'm surprised you would not see there, Nick, 
Torboli get a yellow for taunting. Yes, yeah, because he, the way it he reacted, like the it was, was kind of like he got up in a couple of the Mustang players. Yeah, it was aggressive. Yeah, grills I mean, there with an aggressive response. Yeah, that is surprising. Inconsistency there. Yes. Ruva Kaba playing it back to Luke to uh, Luke Simpson. Send it back to center again. Harry, a little touch, trying to win it back. Played along though by Taylor Gardner on the other side, looking there for John Garcia. Goes out of play. Off of the Mustangs going out, so we'll get a corner kick here for Garcia and Trinity. Hiller still up two to one after Radcliffe could not convert the penalty kick. Now Garcia here on the corner kick. Hands up. A little lob. The Mustangs able to turn that one away. And more contacts. And Radcliffe will pick up the foul. A card again. And a card here on Harry Radcliffe. Wow. My goodness gracious. We're nearing double digits with cards. They showed him the red. Wow. Mm. That is unbelievable. So Radcliffe in his final game, he had Hamilton exit with a double yellow. And you initially saw the yellow signal there to Harry. I don't think it was a straight red. I think they gave him the initial yellow for the contact and maybe the second yellow for what he said afterwards. Yeah, that's always an issue with chirping back of the officials. Can't hear what's being because said, Because the obviously. red was not shown initially. No. He took the yellow out of the pocket. Well, that's a shame for... So it ended up being a double yellow, but both of the 10.05 mark. Now the Mustangs, two players short. Yeah, that's a shame for the Mustangs and for Mr. Radcliffe. Now you'll have a free kick here for Trinity. Fans here certainly alive. My goodness. You got a two-man advantage <laughs> the rest of the way. Wow. This will be the last home game. You've had Radcliffe pick up three cards because Cole picked up a yellow. Sure. Too. Runs in the family. Well, they can talk about their cards at dinner. Yes. A free kick and a goal That's from it. Trinity's John Garcia. To extend the lead, a 3-1 to one, Garcia scoring off the free kick at the 10-0-2 mark of the second half. That's massive. Hillers that go up 3-1. Yep. That takes the card total up to 9. 9, wow. Double on Harry. Double on Hamilton. Yanoski with 1. Cole with 1. That's 6. Then we had 3 on the Trinity side. And where was the line set at Smith, for cards tonight? One on tonight. Sacco and one on their bench. <laughs> it was, was the, the over-under. Yeah, what was the line in Vegas with the cards tonight for the LH <laughs> Trinity game? I don't think it was nine. <laughs> no. I think it was like five and a half. I bet the under. <laughs> Even five and a half would be high. I mean, have yeah. nine. I don't think we've had. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't think I've seen. This is I the know? tenth game we've done on South Union this year, and I don't think I've seen nine total <laughs> coming into today. Wow. Save the best for last. Last goal scored by John Garcia for Trinity. That was off the free kick. Got to chill here as I neglect to cover my arms. Yes, 9.39 left, or 9.35 left. Another foul. See how many cards we can just get tonight. I mean, guys, might as well. Every single <laughs> Why not? foul the rest of the way, let's just throw a card out. Throw the cards you out. You put nine out already, so. Can they average? There's nine minutes to go. go One another minute, nine, get 18 Double it game. up, yeah. And yeah, the Mustangs, two players short now. Wow, that's, yeah, that's brutal. Down two goals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight on the field plus the goalie. That's it. That's quite the disadvantage. Yes. Yeah. Don't want to see the game Ruba come Cabo to this. went over the back. He's saying he was just defending, going for the ball. It's like an old school Union Town LH basketball game or something, Brian. That's worse than that. Uh, fans are into it more than I've seen at a <laughs> soccer game. It can get chippy. Yeah. And not only among the players on the field, but the fans as well. Sometimes the worst ones. You go to those like eight, nine year olds. Oh soccer my gosh, moms. absolutely. <laughs> those soccer moms and dads, they are into it, man. A little too much. Let the kids play. Set over on the near side. Hillers with 
A lot of open field trying to take advantage. Mustangs one of the offsides, and they got it there on the quick break from Connor Smith. And credit Luke Simpson. He had the hands up early. Yes, the he official did. Hey, yeah. And was offsides. <laughs> you don't trying you see to help breaking. The, a lot of times yeah. you can get those calls. Yeah, come on. Trying to help the official out a little bit. Being honest. Booted back to center again. Eight minutes left. Those cards have kind of extended the match. Had a lot of stoppages where the clock has stopped here in the second half as well. Cooper Hunt playing it back in Luke Simpson's direction. But tough if you're at Laurel Highlands right now. You're down oh, yeah. two on the scoreboard, down two men on the field. Almost I mean, what, insurmountable. Yeah, what can you do to try to get back in the match? Just not many things. You know, playing two, two guys shorthanded. Yeah, really not much you even, can do Even if you pull your goalie out, you're still a guy short. Sure. And again, a lot of these, you know, calls tonight, I think, you know, very questionable. You look at the Hamilton first yellow was for a little push after the play, which I get. The second one just seemed to be more incidental contact, guys, playing the ball as Rubicaba comes forward. Mustang still battling. Down to Thatcher Wilson and rolled and scooped back up by Ryan Torboli. And you got the one Radcliffe, the Harry Radcliffe yellow for a little contact again, top of the box. It must have just... Again, said something to the official the official did not like. Said the magic word. Yes. Three officials out there today. And again, much respect to the officials. Oh, yeah, we're not sports. down there. We no, don't see what's, no. you know, we can't tell what's it's being tough. said. And tough job to be a youth sports referee. Oh, yeah. And, and they, they don't want to, you know, and to be honest, I, you know, I think you see a lot of these, I think soccer's the worst about it. How many times after, uh, especially you look at a Premier League game or an MLS game, and a player is called for a foul, they immediately get in the face of the official. Yeah, that's, 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 that's such a bad example for these players. It does. And you even saw it. You go back to Torboli when they had the penalty called inside the box, which set up the Radcliffe penalty kick. Torboli was in the official's face as well, please. Yeah, I don't the case. get that. The, the, the official makes the call. Just let him make the call, live with it. Sure. But you get, and you see it on the professional level, and that's where these kids learn it at. Oh, know, we you, have wide you, receivers you, pushing cameramen after yeah, games for yeah, goodness' sake. Like Devonte Adams uh, the other exactly. day, but still, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, see those examples on the professional level. But you see it carrying over here as well. You had a little push in the back there from Andy Palm. And just a foul call. Ruva Cobb will take the free kick. But of all sports, I think that's the worst. I mean, sure. even, you know, you watch basketball, you don't see the uh, players argue with the officials. They might say something, but not get into the face like they do playing soccer. And sure. even you it's know, an professional emotional hockey, game, you don't I, see it to that no. extent. Either. They'll talk to the officials about it, but not to the level you see in soccer. And it's kind of a shame you see such a carryover of that effect here on the high school level as well from what you see in the professional game. But again... You, Lead by example. You're in a certain environment. You think that environment's the right thing to do. And sure. You see some of your idols that you live up to doing it, so you think it's the right thing to do. You had another little push there from Paul Hunt. And things like that happen. Yes. It's an emotional game. and For sure. But you want to try to rein that in, especially That's if you know you're going to be on television. For the night. Absolutely, Brian. It's a good one. The kids are watching. <laughs> somebody please think of the children. <laughs> 4.33 to play. Down to John Garcia. Another blast here from 28 out. Mrs. Wild Wild on left. the far side. But I think it's easy on a professional level. The first time one of those guys gets in the official's face, if, they, if you're mad about you got a yellow, you flash another yellow, yeah. that's it. It's over. Rain it in. Yeah. And you rain it in like that on a high level. You're not going to see the down. you're not going to see the trickle down effect yeah. in the college game and in the high school game and sure. everything else. Sure, it starts but, at the top. But they said it, that example at the top that that's tolerated. Well, those guys. And then are... everybody else thinks it's tolerated, and you get Ooh. another big collision on the far side. Wow. Now let's see. If Could we get be another here. card. I think we. Yeah, we're going to get one. Have our tenth of the night, correct? This will be number ten. The three fifty four mark. Is that a red there? Looks red to me from. Across the field. Zoom in. So that was a red there, Jason? Well, if they don't make a substitution, we know it's red. Well, it's been a while since I've seen a soccer match with three guys short. 
Was that Rulva Kaba that got tossed? It definitely was. Yeah, Rulva Kaba got tossed. My, my. So Rulva Kaba gets the straight red. He was not on a yellow. That was a straight red with 354 to play. And the Mustangs, three players down. Down two on the scoreboard. That's remarkable. It's been a long while since I can remember any level. There's a little sly tackle. Will be another one? No, hopefully not. I mean, Jason, you ever remember a matchup here? A guy three, three short? Stop the presses. Yeah, very, very rare in any level of soccer to see three reds. This will be like if tomorrow you're doing the football game and there's, I don't know, what's the equivalent? I don't. There's even, no, I don't mean, you can have multiple personal fouls. Personal roughing the passer over and over yeah, again? You can have ejections. Even if you have ejections playing football, you're still playing 11-on-11. 11 11. Sure. Yeah, there's no equivalent. Here it's 11-on-8. I mean, eights. if you have personal fouls after every play. I mean, you look at it out there, you got seven guys on the field plus the goalie right now for Laurel. Yeah, that's just remarkable. Yep. You never see that. With three minutes to play. One of those games would be nice to have Jerry Rogers may come up to the booth after the game. Sure. His, I'll lend him his my thoughts on. <laughs> this post-game interview happened, brought yeah. to you by Davis yeah. and Davis. <laughs> They'll get you ready for the game. Yeah. Well, that's sorry. Somebody else. <laughs> Whoops. And another nice little run into the box, trying to make it 4-1 to one and send it to the back of the net and in for Connor Smith. And there's your dagger with 2.37 to play. I would imagine... Four to one. Yeah, tough way for the Mustang season to end. My yeah. goodness, but ten cards tonight. Ten cards, ten cards and a loss. Five goals. Excuse me. And a four-one lead for Trinity. Here are the final two thirty-seven. West Virginia and Baylor tied at twenty-four. Jason well, your Taylor color doesn't. analyst will be happy with that. What's that? Your color man for football Steve, will be yep. happy about that. Country roads take me home. Yep. That might determine what kind of a mood Steve's in tomorrow night, Absolutely. depending on how West Virginia does tonight. Beat Baylor. I'm sure he's tuning in our broadcast. I mean, Steve is a huge soccer guy. Steve he doesn't, loves he, soccer. He does not lead on as a big soccer guy. but He's truly a fan of all stick and yes, ball sports. He, including soccer. <laughs> I would say tennis is his favorite. <laughs> you heard the story. Steve and I actually played in a doubles tennis tournament together. Is that right? Uh, about uh, 12, 13 like years ago. The, the Green County Open, and we oh are actually runners-up in doubles. Well, I know Steve loves all We, we lost in the finals. Uh, Ron Headley, who was the wrestling coach at Waynesburg University, was wow. on the team, and uh, a guy <laughs> they called a buck. Is there any film of this? <laughs> And uh, his partner was Buck Buchanan, John Buck, Buck Buchanan. Buchanan. That's a great name. And Ron Headley beat us Old in the, beat Steve and I in the doubles final, the Green County Open, probably ten or eleven years ago. I have my runner-up ribbon still at home. Nice. <laughs> you don't want to wear the. We ribbon, got another though. yellow card. Oh my goodness! And did we get a send-off. Yeah, Yanoski. Picked up the yellow earlier, so he gets another yellow with 136 to play. And now he gets the red. So the Mustangs are four players short with 136 to play. This is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, this is insane. So it's 11 on 7. 7 come 11. Wow. Well, 136 to play. 4-1. Mustangs, four players short. Take a picture of this, folks. So you're going to have, on the field, 10 on 6. We don't include the goalies. <laughs> this is, yeah. Man, I'm seeing a lot of I mean, this is here. madness. And this is not how every soccer match plays out, Brian, you're telling me. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, like we were talking you about you never me. see three, three players short. <laughs> never, ever, ever wow. recall four players four, down. No. Not even going back to your college announcing days? I never, ever remember being four guys short. And this is watching any match on TV. I'm sure it's happened before. I'm sure. Well, call the Elias Sports Bureau. Maybe the ESPN will get it on tonight between NBA preseason highlights. Yeah. Now it's like target practice now for Trinity. You have so much open space. I mean, I'm sure. tough to keep possession of the ball right now for no, the Mustangs. Good news is only 120 left. 
We got this all on film, though, tonight, which is good, sure. Nick. Sure. Thank goodness. Another long clear. Put this in the National Archives. <laughs> <laughs> the Smithsonian. 105 to play. And I don't think, you know, we anticipated this type of drama coming in. Laurel Highlands no. is playing for pride. Trinity knows they're in the postseason. So, I mean, Trinity's certainly playing for playoff positioning, but. Yeah, well, this was anything but a ho hum 4 1 match. Yep. And again, thanks and congratulations to all the Mustang seniors on a great career. Evan O'Brien, Caleb Yanoski, Harry Radcliffe, Ain Hamilton, and Aaron Broadwater on the Laurel Highlands side. Also, Owen Baker, Zachary Thornburg, Connor Smith, Brian Rice, and Alex Noble wrapping up their careers at Trinity. Yeah, that's There's awesome. Hunt with a little lob. We're capping off if the Mustangs got a goal here late. Four That'd be down. great. A furious <laughs> comeback here. Four men take, down, three goals down. Ten seconds. Might as well bring the goalie up, right? Let's do it. On the corner kick, head in oh. and saved. You had O'Brien got a piece of it. Torboli made the save. And that'll do it. Four that'll to one, it. your final score. Hillers knock off the Mustangs. 11 cards tonight. Mustangs end up four players short and fall four to one. Tonight's game was brought to you as a joint cooperative venture featuring Township Supervisors Bob Schiff, Bauer, Rick Vernon, and Jason Scott, Breezeline Cable, Armstrong Cable, and our friends at CUTV, including Gary Smith and his staff. Again, I'm Brian Morozak. With Nick Barczyk, this has been a South Union Township Sports Network presentation. Again, your final score, Trinity 4 and Laurel Highlands 1. Song, everybody.